Good morning, Grove Presbyterian Church. Welcome, everyone. It's so good to see you. What a beautiful fall, Chris, morning, huh? How many had to dig out a sweater this morning? I bet you. And welcome to everybody viewing at home. We do wish you were here with us today, but we welcome your presence in that way. I have a couple of announcements to make this morning. Number one that I'm going to announce wasn't the first in the bulletin, but how wonderful and how much are we looking forward to November the 6th. We will be able to vote on the terms of call for a new pastor for our church. Is that not just the best news ever? Thank you, God. Thank you, PNC, for all your hard work and many, many long hours. And we all look forward to that. So please do not miss the worship service on November the 6th. That will be exciting. Um, the deacons are once again going, joining hands with Christ our King Presbyterian in Bel Air. Edith, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. You look like you're, and I thought maybe I wasn't close enough to the mic. Good. For the Thanksgiving baskets that come up. The, during the month of October is our chance to help with the monetary part of the thing because it's very expensive these days. I'm even hoping they can get the turkeys because I've heard there's going to be a turkey shortage for Thanksgiving. So if you are so inclined, please drop a check for $50 or less or more, whatever you want to give towards the, uh, the event in the offering plate. And be sure to mark in the bottom of the check that it is for the Thanksgiving boxes. Thank you very much. And today is another wonderful day. Thank you, fellowship team. Today is our annual pickup, picnic. Pick up, picnic, <laughs> whatever. You can, you can pick up some good food at the picnic. Um, and even if you didn't sign up, I hear there's plenty of food over there, so please come across the parking lot and join us all for a wonderful picnic. Are there any other announcements to make before I let Jim come up? We have a minute for mission. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So Helen mentioned the crisp air this morning, and that's not only the, the feeling of fall in the air, that's the feeling of, of stewardship, stewardship month. Um, it happens, happens uh, each October every year, and it seems to come around quick. But uh, it's time to send out the pledge cards and, and ask everyone to, for their support to the church. Um, I look out here, you know, on the occasion that I'm up here speaking, and I, I see everyone out there, and I know uh, the work that you all do and the effort that you all make on behalf of this church, and it's, it's amazing, really, um, and it's much appreciated. Um, but we need your financial support as well. Um, as Helen mentioned also, we have a new pastor, hopefully starting uh, soon. November 6th is the day we'll hear him preach and vote. Um, that's going to obviously place an additional strain on us financially. Um, there's, there's no way of getting around it. But uh, really, if you look at our budget, and um, those of you that pay attention during the an annual congregational meeting when we review the budget, as I'm sure you all pay attention to that, um, you'll know that it, it costs about $250,000 a year to, to run this campus and this ministry. So the biggest... Uh, part of our budget income wise is from pledges and we have other sources of income whether it's the use of the, the campus by other groups it's obviously uh, money earned on funds in the bank or in investments but the biggest thing is still pledges so when Dave was up here a week ago he gave us a personal story about something that happened a few years ago when we asked for and received a 20 percent increase in pledges and uh, I almost feel guilty about asking you all for that, knowing everything that everyone does already, but I'm asking for it. 20% increase in pledges this year. Um, Lord willing, uh, and you can do it. Um, but um, having said that, um, this week the letters will go out, the pledge letters will go out, so if you do not receive a pledge package, not sure I was going to sputter on that one. Um, let, let me know. Uh, they should go out this week. If you don't have one by next Sunday, let me know, please. And uh, we'll make sure you get uh, on board. Um, I think that's it. Um, honestly, I had a real great page of notes at home. Uh, so uh, 
And this is supposed to be a minute, so I'm probably already overdone. Thank you very much. Don't worry about it. I forgot my watch. I couldn't time you anyway. Thanks, Jim. Did a pretty good job for not having any notes. Let's prepare for worship. We've come to God's house this morning where we receive a welcome from God which goes beyond anything we can deserve or even imagine. Let us take a moment of meditation to be embraced by the welcoming love of God. Please stand if you are able, and we're going to try something new this morning on the call to worship. Let's all join our voices and sing, Take My Life and Let It Be, as it's printed in your bulletin. Thank you. We seek forgiveness for our sins to reconcile our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Let's pray the prayer of confession in your bulletin together and take a few moments after for silent meditation. Lord, forgive us our efforts to love you with heart, soul, mind, and strength often fall short. Our lack of trust in you hinders our ability to give ourselves completely to you. We stubbornly deny that you know what is best for us. Our mindset of meagerness keeps us from loving our neighbors and ourselves. Amen. God's love shown to us through Jesus is greater than our shortcomings. The blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God purifies our conscious, consciousnesses from dead work to worship the living God. Jesus Christ, we are Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share signs of peace among one another. Please join me in the prayer of illumination as it's printed in your bulletin. Lord of our soul, you are the God whose steadfast love never ceases. Your mercy is endless. Help us to open our eyes and grow in this hope. Amen. The Old Testament lesson today is taken from the book of Lamentations, which is a book of sorrow and regret. But in the middle of the book, it focuses on the goodness of God. And so we read today. We're going to read chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, and page 1279 in your, in your Bible, 1279. Please listen for God's word to us. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his passions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is the word of our Lord.
Our New Testament lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Mark. You can find it in chapter 8, verses 34 through 38, and that'll be on page 1,567 in your pew Bibles. Please listen to God's word for us. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This too is the word of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the collective meditations of all of our hearts be in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So on this beautiful fall morning, it is a beautiful fall morning out there, isn't it? Can I get an amen? From some, thank you, thank you. It's beautiful outside. October is here. I don't know where the time has flown. It feels like just yesterday was August, but here we are well in October and certainly enjoying all the beautiful colors that come along with this season. But certainly on this morning as well, we also kick off a month full of stewardship. And we're going to talk a little bit more about stewardship and what it means to be a steward today and over the course of the month. And of course, following the service, we'll join together in Mitchell Hall uh, together in fellowship. But stewardship for many churches is typically one day in November. And I think it's important that we understand what that word really, truly means. Of course, Merriam-Webster does define it as uh, one employed in a larger household or estate to manage domestic concerns, such as the supervision of servants, collection of rents, and keeping of accounts. But at its root, stewardship is the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. And in the book of Genesis, Scripture tells us that the Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work and take care of it. And stewardship in Christianity stems from the belief that human beings are created by the same God who created the entire universe and everything in it. And to look after creation is, of course, our responsibilities as Christian stewards. And as Christian stewardship, of course, becomes a spiritual matter, not just a key word or synonym for raising money. Stewardship is a care of and connection to that which we have been given and entrusted to, while giving part of oneself, our time, our money, or our service. And giving, of course, always has been the mark of a Christian commitment and discipleship. The ways in which a believer uses the gifts of material items, personal abilities, or time should reflect a faithful response and sense of stewardship to God's self-giving in Jesus Christ and Christ's call to share the good news with others. And tithing is, of course, our most common example of this Christian discipline of stewardship, but it includes so, so much more. We are compelled to offer ourselves in service to God. And Khalil Gibran, a a Lebanese-American poet from the early 20th century, once wrote, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. And of course, Christ tells us that true discipleship is one of self-denial, a sense of sacrifice, to take up our cross and follow. And of course, as it's written in 1 Timothy, we have brought nothing into the world. And that is so that we can take nothing out of it. But what do we get in return for this sense of, or this self-sacrifice? As humans, we innately desire a quid pro quo relationship with almost everybody we encounter. We want something in return for what we give. And we get skeptical when others don't expect something in return. It makes it hard to trust someone or something when we say to ourselves, what's in it for you? Or what's in it for me? But what we get in return in this relationship with God is whether or not we ask for it, is Christ's unrelenting love for each and every one of us. And as disciples, we must be confident in Christ's love for us and love ourselves so that we can in turn love others and become true stewards. 
And over the next few weeks, the Amigos and I will be using themes found in the lyrics of the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, written by Francis Ridley Havergal, to highlight the theme of stewardship and giving oneself in service to the world. Now, of course, the author of this hymn, Francis Ridley Havergal, was a poet and a hymn writer born in 1836. She was the youngest child of Henry Havergal, an Episcopal minister. And as a little girl, she would sing hymns and often sat on her father's knee and while he read scriptures, but in her reflections that she would go on to write, she did not remember having any serious impressions about religion until she was at least six years old when she heard a sermon which dwelt much on the terrors of hell and on Judgment Day. And it is written that she is told to have, have told no one, but the sermon made such an impact on her honor that she needed to find relief in prayer. So she began writing poems and verses at the age of seven, and later in her life her poems were published in several religious periodicals at the time. And in 1850 she entered a religious school whose influence over her transformed her perception of the gospel, despite being very much raised in the faith. And at the age of 15 she would write, I have committed my soul to the Savior, and heaven and earth seemed brighter from that moment. And in her childhood, Frances lived a very earnest Christian life and sought to glorify God and serve him by teaching in Sunday school, singing in churches and elsewhere, visiting the needy, and so on and so on. And even though she was only a child, she felt that she was only a little child in the spiritual life, and she longed for a deeper Christian experience. Her writings began to draw attention, and the, her embodiment of being a steward was evident through all of her actions. And unfortunately, her father would die suddenly in 1870, but three years later, she fully dedicated her life to Christ. And at some point during this time, she took up a brief stay at a place called Arley House, a house of refuge where approximately 10 people lived, and where she found people who were not believers, and those who did believe, but were not walking with the Lord. And over a period of five days, she would work to convert those who, who didn't know Christ and renew a sense of deep faith in those who thought they did. And on her final day there, she was encouraged to write how each one had come to know Jesus. And each Christian she had come to meet, how each Christian she had come to meet over that time restored their fellowship. And it was then that she wrote the first stanza of a poem that would become the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. She would write, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. And each verse would symbolize the efforts to show her love for others based on the love that she had found in Jesus Christ. And in her personal writing, she would highlight the burden she felt for the lost as she reflected on her possessions, her earthly possessions, particularly her jewelry. And she would go on to sell it to a local mission house. And when she did, she would then write the third verse of the hymn, take my, light, oh, take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. And I wanted to highlight this hymn not only because it's what we'll be preaching on over the next several weeks, but through this hymn we can learn what true stewardship looks like. In our Old Testament lesson this morning, we read from the book of Lamentations a collection of poetic laments from, for the destruction of Jerusalem. And as Helen alluded to earlier, it is beautiful and strange, the gospel is strange, that in the laments of God's children we find this brief but important reminder that because of the Lord's great love for us, a love that never ceases, we are not consumed. But we must recognize and accept this love if we are to serve and love others in a way that truly reflects the discipleship and stewardship that has been embowed on us. And if we believe that the mission of the church is to make disciples, to teach people to obey the commandments of Christ, we have to remember that Jesus also said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. But taking up the cross is a burden, and it can cause us to be full of lament. But it is where we find self-denial, and love displayed through Christ's self-sacrifice for us. A sacrifice that is rooted in love. John 3.16, of course, tells us what? For God so loved the world. 
And as Christians and as disciples, the world has been entrusted to our care. It is our children, our brothers and sisters in the faith, those who yearn to know the love of Christ and those who have yet to hear the good news. And I pray that as chosen stewards, we display responsible management of all these which have been entrusted to our care. And as we explore this subject more over the next few weeks, may it deepen our acknowledgement and the sense of resp responsibility. Amen. Our next hymn is number 358, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Please be seated. We've come to the time in our service where we offer up our heart, our prayers, those in our hearts, those on our mind, those spoken and unspoken. Uh, I'd like to begin, uh, please keep in, in prayer, Jenny Mitchell, who uh, right before the service uh, was brought to my attention that she's back in the hospital. Uh, so we of course want to offer continued prayers for Sister Jenny Mitchell. Uh, do we have any additional prayer requests we'd like to lift up this morning? Sally Holmes and her mother? Okay. I'm going to keep Sally Holmes and her mother in our prayers as well. Any additional prayer requests? All right. As always, I'd like to draw attention to the bulletin, those brothers and sisters who have ongoing health concerns. All of those, let's keep them in our prayers. I'd, of course, like to offer up prayers for the conf various conflicts around the world, often which we forget about in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, prayers for the sick and suffering, those and especially in our community who are struggling to come to God. And we ask that God find them, heal them, and lead them. 
Please join me in prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for our world and its abundance beyond measure. We pray for insight as we fulfill our responsibilities as its caretakers and for pardon for the times when we have taken these blessings for granted. We thank you for the ceaseless love you pour into us every moment. And we pray that through recognition of this love, we too become true stewards and disciples. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our last hymn this morning is number 444, Rain Down.
May the love of God that is steadfast and never ceasing be with you as we leave this sanctuary today. And as we go into God's world, may we be ready and willing to be loving, trusting, and generous children with the assurance that we are not alone. God is with you and God is with us, touching our hearts with mercy. And as we go, we may go with the assurance that God's spirit is within each and every one of us. And we make it evident that we are children of God who cares for all God's children and desires to bring them to Christ. So with your community of faith with you, we pray that we fill each and every heart with encouragement and be true stewards. Amen.